In 2013, Marty came out with a movie many considered vile, disgusting, and vulgar, yet it's also considered a comedic masterpiece by others, made bank, and garnered up some awards buzz. In 2016, Marty came out with another movie that was the complete opposite, yet almost no one showed up, and Oscar-wise, it tied with a little film called Suicide Squad. Of course, there's many factors that come to play with this, one of them being the way it was distributed, the other being the subject matter, the runtime, Margot Robbie, but putting all of those things aside, our personal taste in film, I want to break down silence, not for its technical aspects, but for its story. Because many times we judge a movie by saying, oh, the acting was okay, I just didn't like their accents. The cinematography looks really nice. I got bored. Or, I mean, the pacing was bad. And it's not to say that judging those things is bad, they're just the factors that make up the core of every movie. The story. Whether you agree with the main themes or you don't, if a movie can get you talking by the credits, then I think it's an effective movie. Now, first off, this isn't a video debating God's existence or whether religion is right or wrong. There's a bunch of other videos you can go look out for that, and I'm pretty sure I'm going to have to repeat this in the comment section. Two, whether you're religious or whether you are not is important to you. In terms of this video, we're only looking at it from the point of view of this Jesuit priest and the mission that he's on. Three, I don't have a three. So spoilers for silence if you haven't seen it because I'm going to break down and analyze the religious themes that are in the movie, but most importantly, try to convince you that Rodriguez utterly failed. So let's begin. Like in all religions, there are rules and values. And like in all religions, they usually have a book that you can literally go pick up, read it, and understand what they believe in. Obviously, the spiritual side of it and that journey is, is a completely different thing, but you can be a lying, thieving adulterer at heart and still understand that if a Christian breaks one of the Ten Commandments, they're doing something bad even if you don't believe in those commandments. For Rodriguez, we see two principles that really guide him. One is his missionary work for the Lord, and two is keeping God's name holy, meaning to not take it in vain or disgrace certain idols. He breaks both of those. Sure, Silence is a religious film, but it's not this positive testament to faith that a lot of people think it is. It's not bashing religion either, it's just showing you this journey of this man and his faith and telling you that just because you believe you're listening to God's will doesn't mean you aren't being driven by something else. For example, right from the beginning, we see him trying to convince the father to go save Ferreira, to which the father responds, This is in your hearts, then, both of you. Yes. It is. And I must trust God has put it down. But... Is it the Lord's will? Contrast that with a clip from another faith-based film, also starring Andrew Garfield, and you get an interesting contrast. thought I can't do that. Yes, you can. It's just pride. Pride and stubbornness. Don't confuse your will with the Lord's. Consider that Rodriguez grew up with this man as his teacher, saw him every day, idolizes him. So when he hears that he's in danger, obviously he wants to go save him. Admirable. But that doesn't mean that him wanting to go save him is God's will. And that's when you get to the dangerous part of confusing your will with the Lord's. Regardless, they embark on their journey and are shook once they enter Japan. There's even a point when the people are so gracious for their presence that they sacrifice the food that was meant to feed them and they give it to the priests and the priests forget to pray. So you got everyone over here pulling a Gandhi, yet they still take the time to ask for a blessing for another person's meal. When they're stuck in the cabin, you see their patients starting to wear even thinner. And as tensions rise, they remain in the background safe as can be as people get persecuted for the things they taught them. Again, this isn't a video judging their religion and whether it's right or wrong, but dissecting someone's personal faith. Because when you look at it, these Japanese people, whether the priest would have come to them or not, were still living terrible lives. They were living in these shacks, they were living in these swamps, and they had no hope whatsoever. It isn't until they hear about this afterlife that they call a paradise that they finally have something to live for. It's one of the main themes of the gospel, yet when Rodriguez sees them smile at the face of death, the man's more confused than Amy Adams not getting an Oscar now. 
He's scared. He doesn't get why they're so happy to die for a cause because it's so much easier to practice what you believe in and learn in the comfort of your own home than to actually go out and try to apply it when there's danger right in front of you. Rodriguez then starts to believe he has his own personal Judas in Kochichiro, who keeps betraying him over and over, and little by little, he starts to see himself as a Christ figure. Literally. He literally sees the reflection of Jesus Christ in his own reflection. He then gets sold out for coins, he gets caught, more torture happens, and then we ultimately see what happened to Father Ferreira. He's done. He's completely renounced his faith and is even writing a book criticizing Christianity and promoting Japan. And then we get the perspective of Japan, the people who we view as the villains of the movie. And we learn, as the governor tells him, that he may have good intentions of coming and spreading the good news, but he's being used, that it's just a ploy to be able to come in, get rid of all of Japan's culture, redo it and have this religion come in so then someone else can take it over. And looking back at history, that's kind of been done several times. So while it does seem a little excessive the way that they're trying to stop it, think of it in Game of Thrones terms and where if someone were to disrespect you and wanted to take over your house, if you were your boy Eddard Stark, you would know that you gotta cut some guy's head off before they revolt and they take over. Obviously, Rodriguez doesn't agree with him, which then leads to the climax of the movie. After all this tribulation and imprisonment, he gets put into the same exact situation as Ferreira was, to apostatize. And after so much torture and silence, he hears, Come ahead now. It's all right. Step on me. The notion that through all our pain, God too has been suffering with us is the answer to the silence. But the notion that some people have of this being the moment God finally intervenes, it's not. For starters, remember back to his principles of never committing an act like that. And while you may think, well, maybe God will make an exception, you know, maybe he set this rule that said, never do this, but out of nowhere he'll change his mind. No, remember that in the Bible itself, it tells you that he never changes. So you can't decide what version of God you want to follow depending on the scenario. Two, and paraphrasing the Marian Catechist, if Jesus symbolized someone who gave his earthly life to bring eternal life, then wouldn't trampling on the bringer of eternal life for the sake of earthly life be contradictory? On top of that, you then start to question, well, if he was going to intervene, why for these people and not the others who also died? Was it a breaking point for God? Or was it a breaking point for Rodriguez? As much as I searched, I also couldn't find who voices Jesus in that scene, but the multiple times that I've heard it, it resembles a lot of that of the father back in Portugal, someone he would have in his subconscious and who he's heard reciting the words of Jesus multiple times. To top it all off, a bird literally crows three times after he commits that act. The same thing that happened to Peter when he betrayed Jesus. He then follows Ferreira's path, gets a Japanese name, new wife, steps on the stone every day, and even helps rat out Christian travelers who are coming in. He's completely renounced. What Scorsese kind of changes from his adaptation as opposed to the book is that he has him dying with a cross that his wife slipped in to emphasize that even though he's not doing missionary work, deep, hidden in his house, where he's not preaching to anybody, he still remains with his faith. Which is cute, but again, going back to his principle, he's completely just denying it. It's exactly what Japan wanted, a broken, hidden faith that's away from everything else, which would cause not only people to not want to be a part of it, but even the people who believed would go, wait a minute, maybe that's the way things should be, hidden, away, apart from everywhere so it won't cause any trouble, exactly like Japan wanted it to be. Once that starts being the norm, you've lost. Bishop Robert Barron puts it like this, Imagine that he wasn't a Jesuit priest, but a soldier. And as a soldier, whatever his higher ranks decide to do with his deployment is their business. He himself really wants to serve. And so him and a group get sent on this Saving Private Ryan mission to go rescue somebody, better caught, 
they completely renounce their country and then even start working for the enemy against us. Would people see that as heroic? Would people see that as patriotic? Probably not, yet people from churches have seen Rodriguez's journey as something to be proud of. What's interesting to me is how back in 1988, the Catholic Church straight up banned Scorsese's Last Temptation of Christ, a movie that explored the human side of Christ, focusing on the idea that he was tempted like every other human, but the difference being that he overcame each temptation and thus brought salvation. The church didn't like that. In 2016, Scorsese premiered Silence at the Vatican and was embraced because things changed. By the end credits, there's a lot more to Silence than just a three-hour torture missionary film. It's also not this great example of a missionary that a lot of churches believe it is, but it's also not this blasphemic tale of faith. It's the story of a broken man. And as much as we root for him, feel for him, and judge him, we're all doing it from behind a screen where we ourselves are trying to see what we would do in his shoes, not realizing that the character that resembles the audience the most is the wishy-washy Kichichiro. Because it's not until Rodriguez makes the same mistake as him that he finally learns the lesson, that he finally understands his enemy, his friend, his Judas. He finally listens in the silence and learns to love like Jesus did. What I mean when I say certainty scares me, certainty starts war. Certainty starts war on behalf of ideology. Certainty of the I, I, I know and you don't. That's the scariest thing to me in what a human being is capable of doing. <laughs> <laughs>